This is the game for you. Command and conquer generals. You can be a general for the American forces or the Chinese military. Both superpowers are at odds with the anti-imperialist Global Liberation Army. And you can control these resourceful rebels too. All units, stand by. Radar upgrade coming online. Each side has its strengths and weaknesses, with a well-measured balance between them. The Chinese have brute force, but are slow. The Americans have precision technology on their side, but that comes at a price. The GLA make up for their lack of hardware with the ability to scavenge drop weapons. They also have a nasty range of toxic war tools, but these can backfire on their own troops. Hmm, nasty. How about a show of force? Echo Company, engage GLA tunnel networks at grid Charlie 2. Roger that. Echo to Charlie 2. This latest chapter is the first to represent the epic wars in full 3D, and perhaps it looks more gorgeous than a ravaged battleground should. The dynamic new look is impressive and requires a meaty PC to do it justice. Echo 1, report to Senate. Command and Conquer Generals has all the right elements in the right places. They've kept the fun firmly intact while not scrimping on the tactics and strategy. Moving now, sir. into the crazy world of cyber living at number two with The Sims. After three years and approximately 25 million units sold, real life for The Sims is no longer enough. What the plastic population crave these days is glittering supermodel catwalks, monstrous executive toys, and inevitably, prenuptial agreements and car crashes. In this pack, your little creations must sign with an agent and move to Studio Town. This new location is overflowing with movie companies, recording studios, and an original cast of comical characters, all providing limitless opportunities to thrust you into the limelight. Just as in real life, there's little guarantee that your star will stay in the Ascendant. The game features a new fame skill, which you're going to have to maintain if you want to hang on to the vacuous trappings of your new lifestyle. Concerts, negotiations and tacky infomercials are all options for keeping up appearances. This is one of the first Sims modules that is truly challenging, so enjoy those guilty pleasures while they last, darling. There's nothing radical about Sims Superstar, and it's unlikely to win any new converts to the cause. What it does have is much needed elements of glamour and humour, so if you're a Sim with its eyes on the stars, take your chances. Rise of Nations is an epic real-time strategy game that brings to life 6,000 years of world history, architecture, and trade. Things start simply enough. 
After you've established a base, you'll have years of building farms, woodcutting camps, mines, and markets to look forward to. Great! But enough of this Boy Scout nonsense. The real fun, of course, lies with transforming your armies from cloth-wearing stone throwers to legions of Roman centurions and beyond. If you want to enter a new age altogether, you'll have to populate universities and undertake research at the library. From there, you'll develop the ability to create new types of weapon, eventually reaching the 20th century and its attendant oil refineries and air battles. Rise of Nations covers an awful lot of ground, and as a result, it's significantly simpler than Blitzkrieg. Graphics are tiny but superbly detailed, and overall, you're left with the impression that with its combination of ease of use and variety, it's aimed squarely at the novice or casual strategy gamer. If this sounds like you, then you'll get a kick out of this history lesson. Pay attention at the back there. Also set for release in the fall is the expansion pack, Age of Mythology, the Titans. This add-on introduces a fourth culture, the Atlanteans, and a new god, Titan. An additional single-player campaign will introduce you to scores of new mythological units. Plenty of stuff to test your new god's powers on. Excellent. We'll be back with a full clip after the break as we run down our top five shoot-em-ups. We'll see you in two, and remember, whatever you do, don't go off half-cocked. American Conquest Fight Back on the PC could be just the thing you're looking for. As you cross oceans, explore ancient lands, and engage in epic bloodbaths, one thought haunts you. Is this game any good? Graphically, the game is nothing to write home about. The animations are rather basic, your armed forces look rather underwhelming, and the ancient civilizations all look dated. Late 1990s, we'd say. Helping to add to the epic nature of the game are the sound effects, such as horses, cannons, and swords. But unfortunately, they are nothing more than satisfactory. However, the gameplay is very good. It's an RTS, so you'll need to master the art of clicking and pointing. This may not sound like much fun, but it all becomes rather gripping as you wage war, build fortresses, or look after the local wildlife. Unlike Alexander the Great, who wept like a big girl's blouse when he realized there were no more worlds to conquer, there are plenty of campaigns, battlefields, and multiplayer options here to keep you occupied and to stop you from crying. And so the scores go like this. Graphics get a OK 5. The same can be said for the sound. Gameplay gets a solid 7, as does lifespan. Find out whether it conquers all at the end of the show.